Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to establish for ourselves the impact of preamp on mic choice. Primarily today through exploring the differences between the Focusrite Scarlet and the Focusrite Claret, with particular reference to whether they've got enough clean gain to record dynamic microphones. Amen. Uh, I'm going to assume you know a bit about these two ranges. The Scarlet is super cheap, best-selling budget interface and all the rest of it. Uh, the Claret more than double the price and aimed kind of more professional end of the market. I've been using the Claret for uh, quite a while now, very happy with it. But let's compare. I did a video recently looking at affordable mics on acoustic guitar and it was apparent that several pretty cheap dynamic mics sounded really nice and I'm kind of comfortable recommending them as a serious option on uh, acoustic guitar. However, dynamic mics, including ribbon mics, are often pretty low output, which means we need a lot of gain uh, from our preamps, uh, in this case the preamps which are built into the interfaces, to get a decent recording level. So this recommendation to use dynamic mics depends completely on the preamps that we have available to us. If we have to max the gain, and that's introducing a lot of noise, then that recording to most people is gonna sound comparatively worse than virtually any condenser microphone recording, which by comparison is gonna be loud and clear because uh, it requires far less gain. So we're gonna record with four quite different uh, microphones here, uh, two condensers and two dynamics and see how much difference there is. Uh, we're gonna also include in this comparison the DAV BG1 preamp, which uh, you may not have heard of, but it's a, a DECA engineer designed, uh, very high quality preamp used often in classical music and that sort of thing. It's 500 pound preamp for just two channels of preamp, no conversion, no headphone amp, which when you put it uh, alongside the uh, the other two items, you kind of get a sense of the where the money's going there. Um, we're gonna look at two microphones. There's the Octave MK12, which is a pencil condenser, quite often used on uh, acoustic guitar, and the Rode NT1A, which a lot of people have uh, or are considering, and it's pe commonly paired with the uh, Scarlet, uh, particularly. Uh, they both require phantom power, of course, and they respond with a very healthy output. So you're gonna need uh, or want good studio monitors and a quiet room or headphones to hear some of these differences. So a quick word about this test. The mics are not in exactly the same place each time, and I think my playing position moves a bit too, so there is some tonal variation. But what we're not hearing is a night and day difference uh, in terms of quality and noise. To me, they're actually quite similar. Um, now, I know that the Claret preamps are, are nicer sounding. They have a little bit more solidity in the low end, and the highs are a bit clearer. I think overall, 
They're just a little bit cleaner. Uh, the Scarlet is noisier, though in this test, um, the overall noise is masked from the sounds coming from the computer and the light and so on. Um, we'll look at noise at a different test in, uh, d in just a minute. So let's look at dynamic mics. These are the Shure SM7B. Uh, great on vocals, but notoriously low in output. And the Sennheiser E906, which is uh, used on acoustic guitar and percussion uh, quite, quite regularly. Uh, love this microphone, good on guitar caps. Um, it came out really well in the budget, uh, uh, budget mic comparison that I did the other day. Have a listen and see what you think of these. I'm actually quite surprised at how the Scarlet performed there. Um, to me, the things like the dynamics of the playing and the positioning of the mics, uh, like particularly the distance from the guitar, are responsible for much more of the sound uh, than the preamps in these examples. It took quite a long time to sort of set all this up and record you know, combination every combination of four mics and three preamps. And I have to say, having spent the money on the DAV and on the Claret, um, I mean, I only have the Scarlet for like a live uh, application. If I'm honest, I was hoping that the difference would be more obvious to me. Um, now we do know that noise adds up when you start multi-tracking and that is gonna be a factor, particularly with the dynamic mics where we're needing to use most or all of the available gain. So the Scarlet does get quite noisy at the top of the gain range, but it was fine in this example. Uh, the DAV gives 59 dB of uh, input gain. The Claret, I think gives 57. Uh, db and the third gen scarlet 56 db the older scarlets i think mid 2019 they only offer uh, about 50 db of gain and that is going to be a problem with an sm7 or low output another low output um, dynamic mic so anyway so regarding noise i i, <laughs> I did an experiment i wrapped the sm7 in a heavy acoustic blanket to try and kind of block out as much of the ambient sound as possible and I recorded it into each preamp at maximum gain. At the start of each recording, I played a tone in the room at a fixed volume. Um, then I turned the tone off. In Logic, I then boosted the recordings by like 20, 25 dB, and then I used that test tone to kind of match the levels of each recording. So uh, I then split the recordings to show you the tone match section next to each other, uh, so you can see that it's the same, uh, the same volume equivalent and then just the noise. So have a listen to this.
Mm, yeah, so as you can hear, there is a big increase in noise with the, the Scarlet. Uh, obviously, this is a pretty ridiculous example, but it, it just shows to uh, it serves to highlight that there are significant differences in these products when you push them. Um, so I think somewhere in between, uh, we find some sort of conclusion. The Scala is totally usable for a few tracks of acoustic uh, instrument or vocal uh, recordings, even if it's uh, with dynamic mics. If it's very exposed i.e. light finger picking or quiet singing or sp spoken word, uh, then a condenser mic might be the better option uh, with a Scarlet. I think if you record, say, two tracks of acoustic guitar, a lead vocal and uh, some backing vocals, all on a low output mic, and you start adding some compression and all the rest of it, that that noise will multiply and be quite audible in uh, quieter sections of the song. With the more expensive claret, I think you'll be able to keep that noise quite a bit lower. So essentially, a better preamp or a cleaner preamp gives you more flexibility. By being able to use whichever mics sound right, rather than having to use the ones that happen to be a condenser, you get to be more creative, I think, and make choices based on the tonal qualities of each mic. And when you start using really high-end preamps, it's amazing the results that you can get out of the most basic of microphones. The Claret is worth it for this flexibility that it gives you. The headphone amps are also way better, uh, which is so important, not only for mixing, but also for like monitoring while you're recording. Now, whether the Scarlet is not at all bad, I mean, five or 10 years ago, a product like this just didn't exist at this price. So we're quite lucky. I hope you found this video helpful or entertaining. If you did, please consider hitting the like button or subscribing to the channel. But if you didn't find it helpful or entertaining, then uh, you've got to be asking yourself what you're doing here still, haven't you? <laughs> uh, maybe you did like it. Anyway, I wish you all the best. Happy recordings. Uh, don't fret the gear, just get on with it.